Many marine animals are threatened by human activities on the ocean, some directly, for example, by becoming entangled in fishing ropes or struck and killed by ships. In some cases, it's the noise from ships or the litter and the habitat destruction that may occur from different human activities. Some marine wildlife, such as the North Atlantic right whale, are critically endangered because of these threats. There are fewer than 330 of these animals left, and they are only being killed because of inadvertent mortality from human activities. Entanglement in fishing gear and ship strikes in particular are the most important stresses on this population and as a result of that, we may lose them if we don't change how we use the ocean. There's lots we do to try and reduce the threats to marine wildlife from these human activities. Canada currently closes large areas of the ocean to fishing when whales are found in large numbers. This means fishermen have to move their gear out of those areas and fish in other areas. When whales are detected in shipping channels, ships are required to slow down. In some cases, ships are routed around areas where we know whales are found in large numbers. This reduces the risk of lethal vessel strikes. It can reduce the risk of entangling these animals, and it even reduces the pollution and the noise that occurs in the ocean as well. Avoiding human activities in areas where there are whales is a great way to prevent these kind of dangerous interactions. But in some cases, we can't do that. We use large parts of the ocean and we need to continue using large parts of the ocean. So in some cases, avoiding isn't always an option. One thing that might be an option is finding and inventing or investing in new technology that allows us to continue these human activities, but in a way that doesn't cause harm, that doesn't cause the noise, that doesn't cause the risk of entanglement. These are probably our best options for continuing to benefit from the ocean and achieving conservation. The Canadian Wildlife Federation knows that to achieve conservation for large whales, we need to work with the users on the ocean. We work with fish harvesters, we work with the shipping industry, we work with other scientists to look for opportunities to solve those problems and those conflicts between the shipping industry or the fishing industry and, and whales. Most recently, We've invested in a gear lending program. We now have many units of innovative fishing gear that can allow fish harvesters to fish in areas where there's whales without almost any risk of entangling them. We know how to use this gear. We've been training some fish harvesters and we want to give them the tools that will allow them to keep fishing but not harm large whales. Similarly, there are investigations the Canadian Wildlife Federation undertakes with other scientists and some of our own work to understand the extent of the risks from the shipping industry and where there are opportunities for changing shipping patterns, for changing the operation of these vessels that will reduce the risk of lethal collisions or disruption from noise. Making changes to these long-standing industries is not something that happens easily or quickly. Investments are needed for solutions, for inventions that will allow these industries to continue. And these investments and this leadership needs to come from the government. And this is why we need them to be a part of this process. Their ongoing investment in, in these technologies, their ongoing leadership and decisions are crucial to help these industries transition and innovate and use new technology and therefore continue to benefit our economy and also benefiting and protecting our wildlife. Everyone can help by encouraging our government to continue investing in these technologies by signing the Canadian Wildlife Federation's Marine Action Plan petition.